OK. So we've now connected the MIDI out from the keyboard to the input that is here on the MIDI 3 module. OK. And you should be able to play the keys on the keyboard now and have it play the synthesizer box. So just so we're clear, I told you this is a controller, right? So we now know it's not producing sound from the keyboard. It is actually the synthesizer box that's generating this sound, OK? We're generating the, we're turning, uh, let's see, what the MIDI 3 module is doing is converting the MIDI signal that's coming in into a CV output, OK? Both a pitch signal and a gate, OK? Um, so I could disconnect the pitch if you play it now, right? So she's playing different keys on the keyboard, but it's not changing pitch, right? But it's still sending the gate signal. When you press one key, it opens up the gate, and then it closes. When you release it, go ahead. Open the gate, close the gate. Open the gate, close the gate. OK, everybody clear on that? OK. When we connect the pitch, now we have some pitch control, OK? Um, so how does this work? Well, the MIDI 3 take, has a little uh, a computer processor in it that just simply takes the MIDI information coming in and converts it into the necessary signals, OK? A few notes about using the MIDI 3. If you decide to grab one of the keyboards in the studio and connect it up so you can actually play like a normal keyboard, OK? Um, first off, this MIDI 3 tends to hold on to its information uh, a little too long. And so the one thing I like to uh, tell students to do is to first thing reset it. So you reset it by holding this mode button here. Go ahead and hold it. And you'll s eventually see the red lights blink. No. Well, you're making a liar out of me. Let me check my notes again. Hold mode until red lights blink. That's what my notes say. Are you on the mode or the? Yeah, that's the mode. <laughs> I love it when things work in my office one hour before class and then they don't work in class. So. There it is. OK. Hey, OK. So I just have to press hard and hold it. OK. So that resets the unit and flashes it back into kind of uh, factory default mode. OK. Uh, and we'll solve a lot of headaches. Now, the mode light you switch until it's on. I'm going to move these cables out of the way you can, so you can kind of see there's three amber lights there. OK. What do those say, Nadia? Uh, no, the amber lights down on the bottom. Um, mono, duo, and arp. Mono, duo, and arp. OK. Um, let's uh, leave duo aside. What do you think mono does versus, well, let's just, what do you think mono does? What are some uh, synthesizer terms that start with the prefix mono? Like a monophonic. Monophonic, right. So go ahead and press two keys on the keyboard, Nadia. We only get one, right? OK. And it's whichever one you press last is the one that's going to play. So you can actually get some interesting effect. If you want, um, I don't know, counterpoint. So like hold down the C, but then go up the key. Let's see. I'll, I'll do this. Right? So you can have some interesting counterpoint uh, examples uh, rather than having to bounce back and forth if you're playing an actual like monophonic instrument. You just simply, on a keyboard that is monophonic, hold down the, the pedal point and then you can play the other notes. Okay? Everybody see that? Okay. So mono means monophonic. ARP, what's, what's, a, what's a good synthesizer word that starts with ARP? Arpeggiator, right? So let's click the mode and go over to arpeggiator. Now play some chords for us, Nadia. OK, now the gate is really short, yes? OK, so we're getting these really, uh, really, uh, really short durations out of it, OK? Uh, that's where we have to actually start to um, transform the signal of the, the gate in order to get longer uh, envelopes out of it, OK? Um, we can do that inside the synthesizer box with these envelope controls, but we need to do a little bit of patching first, OK? So take the blue cable, right? Is that what it says? Uh, VCA? I can't, I can't read it from that angle. VCA, yeah. VCA, CVA. OK, so move that up to envelope M. 
Okay, and now take this red cable, go from envelope out to the back to that VCA in. What we're doing is we're taking the gate and we're routing it into an envelope circuit on the synthesizer box first, which is going to give us control over the attack and the decay. So go ahead and play your chords again. And you can play as many notes as you want, actually. It's going to arpeggiate through them in whatever order you pressed them. So it's, it's, not the, it's not the order from highest to lowest, it's order f that you pressed them. So if, actually, if, you, see, if you play, uh, if you go like C, G, then E, it should be, uh, let me try this again here. So. The thing that I want to point out is it's not going from highest to lowest pitch. It's actually going in order that I pressed the notes. Okay, so that's one key difference on this arpeggiator. Okay, so be be aware of that. But now that we've got control over the envelope, you can see that there's actually some knobs there that say attack and release. So go ahead and pull the cord uh, with one hand, and then use your other hand to to change the attack and release. And you, I think you bumped the frequency knob. <laughs> Try the attack knob. Is it all the way down? Is it all the way yeah. down? Turn, turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's taking, it's taking longer to balloon now. OK. So now it's playing in a uh, tempo. It's going a little bit out of tune, I think because your finger's <laughs> moving the frequency knob there. So the frequency knob does still have an effect. OK. Um, but this is much easier to tune than when we were using the, 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 synthesizer, the synthesizer box, excuse me, the, the, the Metropolis, right? Because you could actually play a key on the keyboard and then tune it up to, OK, that's, that's actually a C. OK, now I can actually play it, uh, the rest of these keys in tune, OK? Um, let's see. So we're controlling the synthesizer. The last thing I want to show is that there is on the MIDI three. Um, there should be something that says tap. See right there. Yeah. Okay. So it, this has a tap button, much like remember in um, Ableton Live had a tap button where you could tap the tempo. So we're it's playing uh, at a pretty quick clip. That's what that blinking light there is actually showing you the pulse. But if you simply tap it at a lower tempo. Yeah, it slows the light down. And now when you play your arpeggiator, OK? Any questions about the MIDI 3 units? OK. Let's give Nani a round of applause. Thank you. All right.